Hello. So in this video, we are going to be talking about extrema, both the sort of absolute or global extrema and the relative or local extrema. So extrema, what are they? Maximums and minimums. It's just the fancy word that includes both of those extremes, hence extrema. So we can talk about absolute or global and local or relative. But it would be helpful to know what these corresponding things mean, right? So if we look at a graph, absolute or global extrema, these are the sort of uh, extreme values of the entire graph. So absolute or global maximum, that's going to be the highest point on the entire graph. So here, point B, okay? Likewise, if we wanted the absolute or global minimum, that's going to be the lowest point on the entire graph. So here we would have point C. So it's worth mentioning here that it has to be of the entire sort of graph that you have, meaning that if we had uh, this thing going down with an arrow, right, saying that it goes down forever, then we wouldn't have a global or absolute minimum because you have sort of that thing going to negative infinity, meaning that there's no lowest point, right? It just goes down and down and down forever. Likewise, with the maximum bit, it can go up and up forever, right? If it if this right-hand side went up and had an arrow on it, <clears throat> that would be saying that it goes up and up forever, so we would have no global maximum, okay? And just, I know I've been saying absolute or global. These are completely interchangeable, just like if we're looking at the relative and local, max or min, extrema. Uh, these, these words are completely interchangeable and sort of which one you hear the most is probably going to be dependent on the sort of preference of whoever is teaching the class that you're, you know, finding yourself in when they talk about these things. Personally, I try to interchange those when I can because I want you guys to be used to sort of both as, you know, moving forward so you don't get caught off guard. But uh, again, whichever one you want to use is, is fine. They're completely interchangeable. All right. So when we talk about relative or local extrema, again, extrema is the biggest or smallest but now it gets a little more hazy because the relative is sort of a point on the graph that is that extreme. So in this case, the relative or local maximum, it's the biggest point within some small window. And that's the sort of vague part. Really, uh, we, could, we could dive into the formal definition. There is one. But this is more of a calculus thing than a pre-calc thing. And in fact, we don't have the analytic tools in this class to actually compute these things in almost any case. So the big takeaway here from the Extrema video in general is to be able to identify them on graphs, right? So you don't have to worry about having some sort of function and being asked to find the max or min. Um, or, and or if that comes up, it's sort of special cases that we'll talk about explicitly. So when we talk about highest of all nearby points, right? Well, if we look at B, I could sort of put an interval, I could put sort of points on either side of it so that if I look at just that segment here, B is the biggest part in that segment. That's why this would be considered a relative or local maximum. I can sort of look at either side closely enough that it becomes the biggest point there. And the key here is that there exists some sort of narrow enough segment that I can look at. So if you can draw or you can point out uh, the narrow enough segment on either side where that's the biggest part, then that's a relative or local max. Likewise, minimums will be the lowest one. But this has a little bit of a gray area. <laughs> that gray area is what about point D over here? Because if I look at sort of everything to the right of this, this point over here, right, up to there, D is the biggest point in that segment. So point D is a relative or local max. But I did say that you want to be able to put something on either side, right? So when we talked about B, I said, oh, we need to be able to look at a piece on either side. Because if I only ever looked at one side of the graph, then I could find maximums that aren't actual maximums. Um, for example, this point over here, right? If I only look to the left of it, it's the biggest point, but it wouldn't be a relative maximum because the right of it, there's bigger stuff. With D, we only have to the left of D. And so for D, 
it's sort of arguable whether or not this would count because to the right of it, nothing exists, right? So some instructors don't consider endpoints of a graph as a local maximum or minimum. They don't, they don't count them as local extrema. To be explicitly clear, in this class we will, okay? Unless whoever is teaching it, if it's not me, uh, says otherwise, we will always assume that the endpoints are local extrema. There's a whole lot of deep math going on about whether or not you want to count these things, and it has to do with topology, which is like a senior level math major course, and there's madness abounding in the background here. So I want to be just clear that some people consider these things relative or local maxes when they're on the end. Some people do not. When in doubt, ask your instructor which one they sort of adhere to and go with that. For me, I'm counting them. So unless your instructor for this class says otherwise, we will assume, okay? All right, so with that little very notable asterisk out of the way, if we look at relative or local minimums, it's the same deal. I wanna be able to look at some narrow area around it, like around C, for example, where C, in this case, is the lowest value in that segment, right? So C being the lowest value in that segment, that's going to be a relative slash local minimum. And likewise, because I am counting endpoints as being possible relative extrema, A could also be considered one of these uh, relative or local minimums, okay? So we could add A to that list. Now, just like we said before, some instructors don't count endpoints as either one of the local extremas, right? They don't count them as local maximums. They also don't count them as local minimums. So when in doubt, ask the person teaching the class whether they count endpoints, okay? I also want to draw your attention to something that's very easy to miss here, which is that you might notice that A is actually sort of slightly higher up the D, okay? And yet A, even though it's a larger value, is a relative minimum, and D is a relative maximum. So even though A is a bigger number, it turns out that A is still a minimum, and D, even though it's the lower number, is still a maximum, because relative extrema can do that kind of thing. Absolute, right, globals, those have to be the biggest or smallest everywhere, so they can't do that. But relatives can, right? So relative extrema, you can have weird, goofy things like this where the minimums are bigger values than, than the maximums and the maximums are smaller values than the minimums, okay? So just be aware that it's not as simple as sort of ordering biggest to smallest or something like that. All right. So again, to be sort of very concrete and clear about this, when we talk about maximum or minimums, we're talking about the output value. So in particular, absolute maximum and minimums, those absolutes or global max and min values are unique. They are the biggest possible X, uh, the biggest possible Y value or the smallest possible, most negative Y value. But those values, even though the value is unique, can occur at more than one point, more than one X value. So as an example, if we have this curve here, right? Well, if we're looking at, say, absolute maximums, the absolute maximum is one, but that occurs at both this X value at, say, one and this X value, say, negative three, right? So even though the value, the absolute maximum, which is the Y value, even though that is unique, it's just one, right, the value one, it occurs at more than one X point, right? So the, the point is not unique, the value is, right? That's a sort of subtle but important distinction. And same goes for minimums, right? So if I looked at the absolute minimum, it would be presumably negative one, but it also occurs in more than one spot at negative one and three, right? So the Y value is the same for both of these, but they occur in more than one spot, okay? All right, so again, as a quick summary here, the important takeaway, absolute, absolute slash globals, these things can be uh, occurring in more than one spot, even though the value itself is always unique, right? It's the largest value in the y direction or the most negative or smallest in the y direction, but there can be a bunch of x values where that occurs. And in this class, or at least for me, uh, depending on who is teaching, endpoints can and should be considered relative or local extrema, but 
that's not always the case. You want to make sure, right, with whoever's teaching this class or other classes, calculus classes, physics classes, these things come up. But the endpoints can always count as global and absolute. Everyone agrees on that part because the endpoint can always be the possibly the biggest uh, value or the, or the lowest or most negative value, right? So if it is the biggest value, highest up, or if it is the lowest, you know, furthest down, then that's going to be a global max or min. Uh, and everyone agrees on that. So you don't have to worry about whether somebody decides whether it's relative or not. Absolutes, they endpoints can be, doesn't mean they are, but can be absolute value, uh, absolute max or mins. All right. So what are we talking about? Talked about extrema, right? So absolute slash global, interchangeable words. Those are the sort of best of the best, the most uh, maximum and the, and the least minimum. And then we talked about the relative or local, which is sort of if you can, if you can come up with a narrow enough, a small enough interval where that point is the largest or the smallest. So you typically think about or see these things as like the peak of the hill or the bottom of the trough kind of deal. Those are going to be your relative or local uh, extrema, max or mins, respectively. And we sort of talked about how the analytic tools for these things, that requires calculus. So we're not going to actually like number crunch to find these things. That's not something we can do until we have calculus. But we can identify them on graphs. And in particular, we have that sort of weirdness about the endpoints. Endpoints can be global max or mins if that is indeed the highest or lowest point. Uh, but whether or not they count as relative depends on sort of who you're talking to for reasons that are madness inducing and we're not going to go into just know that that's a thing and clear it up with your instructor if it's sort of important in that class for the sake of future videos that you see me doing we will be assuming that that is the case okay so that is that